In this video, I will once again be using our level 2 monk, but this time to showcase the Way of the Shadow class specialization called a monastic tradition. However, before I get into the details of that class specialization, I want to explain a small change I will be making in reference to the remaining videos in this class series, as well as all future classes going forward. From now on, I will be covering the entire base class in one video, even if it uses a class specialization later on. This means I will be leveling a given base class from level 1 through to level 20 in the first base class video so I can showcase all the features that that particular class provides. This way, everything specific to that base class is covered by the time I get to each subsequent class specialization and I don't have to continue to repeat myself. While that means that the base class videos might be a little longer than they have been up till now, the subsequent class specialization videos should be much shorter, thereby saving time overall. With the advent of the table of contents feature provided by YouTube, it will be much easier to find the details of a specific level by jumping around the appropriate video, thus saving some repetition on my part. I do know that not all of my videos have a table of contents yet, and I am working to try to backfill those, but every video that I have recorded within the last couple of months should have a table of contents so far. This video is going to be the first video using the new format, and as a result, this video should be much shorter than the previous in-depth class specialization videos thus far. I may return to the previous classes and update their formats to use the same method but only after I've covered all of the classes that are still yet to be done. In relation to the Way of the Shadow, we have already created the base class in the video specific to the Monk class, which will be linked in the description of this video. However, the features specific to the Monk class from level 3 forward were covered in the video that dealt with the Way of the Open Hand class specialization, or monastic tradition. So the details of those features will be found there, which will also be linked in the description of this video. With that, let's return to the Way of the Shadow class specialization. This monastic tradition focuses primarily on stealth, subterfuge, and surprise. The idea is to strike at your target from the dark and maximize the results of that surprise as much as possible. This means the Way of the Shadow is meant to be used by players that like to strike from the shadows, add confusion to the battlefield, and move around populated areas leaving little to no trace of their presence. As a result, this class specialization provides several features and options that are best suited to those kinds of activities. One example is that your Chi, or Key, will provide the ability to use some spells without any material components all of which are geared towards setting up surprise attacks and remaining unseen for as long as possible. This is in addition to all of the normal monk features you gain as you level up your character. The Way of the Shadow Monastic Tradition is chosen at level 3, so let's do that now that we have everything ready to go. And there we go. When you apply level 3, there is a Monastic Tradition feature that you're going to acquire. And that, as we can see here, and that is going to be Shadow Arts. So let's go over what Shadow Arts actually means. With the Shadow Arts feature, you are now gaining the ability to use two key points to be able to cast some spells without using any material components. Those spells are Darkness, Dark Vision, Pass Without a Trace, and Silence. You can only cast one at a time using two key points. You can't use two key points and cast two spells, for example. Additionally, you are also gaining the Minor Illusion cantrip, if you don't already know it. So let's go ahead and set everything up. So let's select our Actions tab here and pop open Spells. I'm going to set this just over here and search for each of these spells. That covers Darkness and Dark Vision. Let's look for Pass Without a Trace. And finally, silence. And now our cantrip, so minor illusion. And there we go. As we can see, we now have everything within our actions tab. 
And because you're going to be utilizing key points to actually cast your spells, these key points will act as the equivalent of your spell slots, if you will. And one thing to do at level 3 here is that we need to increase our daily use. And that is everything specific to what you gain for the Way of the Shadow at level 3. Our next feature is gained at level 6, and I've already gone ahead and applied level 6 to this particular character. The new feature is called Shadow Step. With Shadow Step, you are essentially gaining the ability to teleport from one shadow to another as long as it is within 60 feet. And this can be done as a bonus action. But you have to be starting from a position where you're already in dim light or in darkness. You cannot teleport from a location that is completely lit or brightly lit into a shadow. You have to actually start from a shadow in order to jump to another shadow. Think of shadow walking. Now the advantage here is, is that if you have not already completed an attack, as soon as you teleport from one location to another as your bonus action, because you can do that before you execute your action, you are then able to make your first melee attack after teleporting and gain advantage on that particular attack. Think of it as the equivalent of a surprise attack while you're in an active combat situation. There is something here that will allow us to go ahead and set up some convenience capabilities here. And that's specific to the advantage functionality. So I'm going to drop this into place here. I'm going to create a new group called Way of the Shadow. I don't know why I capitalized that. I'm going to minimize these spells just so that they're not out there. And I'm going to set up a new effect. And I'm doing that just simply by right clicking on the shadow step or on the way of the shadow group here, left clicking on this add action option, and I want to add a new effect. And I'm just left clicking on that. The effect is that I want to be able to set up advantage on the first attack roll that I, uh, that I make. We do that by setting up something like this, Shadow Step. This tells the Dungeon Master what feature is providing this advantage to you, ADV ATK. So what I've got here is Shadow Step, then a semicolon, a space, and then ADV ATK all in capital letters. And this is going to be on yourself and it's going to expire on your next roll. So how does this actually work? Well, it's primarily going to come into play either at the start of combat or already in an engaged battle of some kind. And as a result, you will already be in the combat tracker, generally anyway, and in preparation for actual combat. So the way this would work is that you're telling the Dungeon Master I'm using Shadow Step, oops, uh, click, there we go, to move from the shadow you're currently in to a shadow that is within 60 feet but is within five feet of a particular target you want to attack and you have to be able to see this shadow just for a point of clarification i am now ready to make my attack so i've used my bonus action i can now say let's say i move closer to this particular gas spore so i'm going to uh, control left click on the icon here in order to actually target that gas spore and then I'm going to make my attack roll. But before I do, I'm going to gain advantage on my next attack roll. So when I actually execute this, you'll see that it will roll two dice. In addition, the colorization here will be green. For those of you who are unable to see the color green, you will notice that there's an ADV symbol here next to the labeling of this particular attack. That tells you that it is an advantage roll. This worked. Great. Now, I had a 25 for my attack roll, which means I hit this particular gas bore, so I get to do my damage. And apparently I've killed it. That works really well. <laughs> so that is everything that we have to do to set up these class specialization features for level 6. Your next 
monastic tradition feature is going to be called Cloak of Shadows, and this comes at level 11, which I've already applied to this particular character. With Cloak of Shadows, you essentially can become invisible when you're already in an area of dim light or complete darkness. This means that you essentially have the effects of the invisibility spell. You will remain invisible until you make an attack, cast another spell, so this includes using your key points to actually cast one of the spells that you do have the ability to cast, or enter an area of bright light. So as long as you continue to move through a shadowy area, you will remain invisible. Once again, this is something that we can set up from a convenience perspective. So if we drop this into our actions tab, you will see that the invisibility effect is already there. All we have to do is organize this into our group, and I'm just going to very quickly copy and paste it. And there, that is everything that we have to do to set up our feature for level 11. The last way of the shadow feature that you're going to gain is called Opportunist. This is gained at level 17, and it essentially gives you the ability to take advantage of an opponent's distraction, if you will. So if there is a creature who you are within five feet of, as long as it is attacked, you have the ability to use your reaction to make an attack against it. Think of it as an attack of opportunity, but the creature is not moving out of your sphere of influence. So there is a limitation in relation to this. If you choose to use your reaction to make, take advantage of that particular option and attack that particular creature, you will not be able to do any other reaction until your turn comes around again. Additionally, if you have gone through the process of setting up a ready action, you are essentially, quote unquote, queuing your reaction phase to whatever that trigger is. Therefore, you will not be able to make use of this particular reaction if you are already waiting on a specific trigger to occur. So while this opportunist feature does give you a very convenient ability to attack a creature almost at will, as long as you're within range of it, it does have some limitations. So it's not as powerful as some other level 17 features that are gained by other class specializations. But this is still a pretty good feature that you can actually take advantage and make use of. It should also be noted that because you're using a reaction for this particular kind of an attack, you have to follow the guidelines of the reaction rules, which means that you're only able to make a single melee attack, even if you have extra attack capabilities. And finally, while this will not provide an actionable item, if you will, per se, it is still advantageous for you to be able to apply this to your actual actions tab so that you can just very quickly show the DM that you're actually using that particular uh, feature, if you will, for the purposes of your reaction. As a result, though, that completes all of the class specialization features that you are going to acquire when you make use of the Way of the Shadow monastic tradition. I hope you have found the new format to this particular series much easier to manage and much easier to deal with from a viewing perspective, and hope I'll evaluate that over time to see how things have changed. If you did like the new format, please go ahead and click that like button and let me know. That would be great. Thank you. I wish to thank you for taking the time to watch this particular video. I hope you found it informative and useful to familiarizing yourself with Fantasy Grounds in general, and that you had fun in the process. If you found the video useful and you liked the content of the particular video, go ahead and click that like button to let me know. And if you have any questions specific to the topic covered by this particular video, or just have some comments in general, please feel free to post something in the comments section. I will do my best to respond to any questions that are asked. Additionally, I do release content quite regularly, and it's generally specific to Fantasy Grounds or 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons at this time. So if you'd like to be notified when new videos come out, go ahead and subscribe and click the notification bell to ensure that notification is sent to you when I release a new video.